The NBA is a difficult league to make an immediate impact in as a young player fresh off of being drafted, and when you look at the best players in the game today, you'll see that many of them started pretty slowly in their careers too. Having patience is crucial to developing young talent, because if you go about it the right way, the results can be so beneficial. In today's video, we're going to be discussing four young NBA players that have struggled a bit early in their careers, but I believe are on the verge of breaking out in a big way this upcoming season, so by no means should they be given up on. They're players who haven't yet put it all together, but have shown enough flashes to inspire confidence that it can be done very soon. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first struggling young player that I believe will finally put it all together and break out this season is Jabari Smith Jr. of the Houston Rockets. Jabari was a top 3 pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, but after initial hype as a potential two-way stud in the making, the hype around him has cooled off pretty drastically due to his mediocre production compared to Paolo Bancaro and Chet Holmgren, who were the two picks made right before him. He was expected to be the most well-rounded of those top prospects that year, but offensively, his game has not been nearly as far along as many hoped, and his progress from year one to year two was not as drastic as expected either, with his scoring output increasing from just about 13 points per game to about 14 points per game the next year. The reason why I have him on this list as a breakout candidate, though, is because of the circumstances that he finds himself in being set up to succeed. He started every game he's played with the Rockets, so there's no pressure of a benching right now. His shooting efficiency took a promising leap last year, getting to the slightly above average marks of making 45% of his shots from the field and 36% from three, and I still think he's capable of improving even more there because of how well he shot the ball in college when he made 42% of his threes and scored 17 points per game. Smith is already such an impactful and versatile defender in the Rockets lineup, so his importance on that end will continuously give him opportunities to play big minutes, and if he's able to regain that confidence in his three-point shot that he had in college while taking about six threes per game, then it's not unreasonable at all to think he could be a solid 18-point-per-game guy while also being a top-tier defender at the position. The last thing I'll say that goes into this being a potential breakout year for him is that he is also eligible for a contract extension at the end of this year, and teammate Jalen Green's contract expires at the end of the season too. If it becomes a situation where the Rockets only want to re-sign one of those guys, then the internal competition for a big extension could also be more than enough motivation to start strong because if there's one thing we see time and time again in the NBA, it's that NBA players often play their best during contract years. The next struggling young player that I believe is in for a big breakout season this year is Josh Giddy of the Chicago Bulls. Now when I say struggling, I mean more so that Giddy's career has been trending in the wrong direction for a few different reasons, but is now in a spot where I think he's very much set up for more success. Giddy has played three seasons already, and his second season was actually pretty solid across the board, but then last year he took a noticeable step backward, and that, combined with some off-the-court events, led to his reputation souring, but in Chicago, I think he's going to remind everybody why he was a top 10 pick in the first place. The truth of the matter is that Giddy's fit in Oklahoma City was never going to be ideal with Shea Gilgis Alexander being as good as he is on the ball leading the show as a lead guard because Giddy is at his best when he can be the facilitator and creator for those around him and he can't do that without the ball in his hands. Back in 2022 when the Bulls last made the playoffs, they started that season red hot, not only because DeMar DeRozan was playing at an MVP level and Zach Levine was an all-star caliber scorer as well, but it was because Lonzo Ball's playmaking talent at the point guard position was quintessential to their success. The Bulls have been in desperate need of a point guard with a knack for making plays for others ever since Lonzo Ball's knee issues have flared up and Giddy can absolutely step into that role and flourish. He's a big guard who defends well, he rebounds well for a guard, he has nice touch around the basket and can score 15 or more points per game in the right system, and more often than not, he's going to find the open man when he has the confidence to attack off the dribble and then kick when the defense collapses. The Bulls may be trending towards a rebuild right now, but regardless, Giddy is a perfect fit for what they were missing. 
The next struggling young player I believe will finally break out this upcoming season is Mark Williams of the Charlotte Hornets. Williams was picked at the end of the lottery in the 2022 draft and came in as a pretty exciting prospect because he's a strong 7-footer who is quick on his feet and can spring towards the rim well in the pick and roll game to decisively attack the basket and finish strong, but injuries have honestly been the thing that has prevented him from taking any kind of serious leap. As a rookie, he only managed to play in 43 games, and he was still coming along slowly in those games regardless. Then last season, he actually showed a lot more confidence in the minutes that he got, but was only healthy for 19 out of 82 games, so that's a hurdle he has yet to overcome. The good news is that he is fully recovered right now, and in interviews, has expressed how excited he is to prove to the Hornets faithful he can be that guy for them, and he's absolutely in a good position to take that leap for sure. For starters, the Hornets don't really have any other realistic options at the center position right now, with Nick Richards being the only other guy signed at the moment there, and while Richards has pleasantly surprised people in the minutes that he's gotten, he's realistically only ever going to be a solid backup option. Mark Williams is going to be the full-time starter and will be featured heavily. With LaMelo Ball back healthy too, Williams should benefit from his passing talent, getting him easy looks inside, and the Hornets honestly need what Williams brings to the the table too, so they're motivated to make it work with him. While the sample size was small last season, when Williams was on the court, the Hornets were a whopping 11.3 points better per 100 possessions, which truly demonstrates how impactful he can be. If he can stay healthy, he should easily average double-double because he's already shown he can be a great rebounder, and with an improved offense around him reasonably coming about as well, he'll be inside cleaning up misses and converting at the rim to what I believe could be anywhere from the 15 to 18 points per game range. And finally, the last struggling young player I believe is about to break out in a big way is Shaden Sharp of the Portland Trailblazers. Sharp is also going into his third season now after being drafted 7th overall back in 2022, and coming in he was always going to be a player that would need a few years to find his footing in the league. He didn't end up playing a single game at Kentucky in college because he reclassified in order to be included in the 2022 draft class, so getting used to competing against NBA talent was always going to be an adjustment. Sharp is an elite athlete at 6'6", with explosive hops at the two-guard position, and can definitely heat up in a moment's notice as a scorer. Last season, he was already showing promising signs as a scoring talent, putting up 16 points per game, and the year before that, he ended his rookie season red hot, but he was pretty inefficient doing so, and then last year the injury bug struck, so he only got to be on the court for 32 games last season. Obviously, as long as he can stay healthy, I'm banking on him easily developing into an 18 to 20 point per game score, and I'm confident in his ability to improve the efficiency as a perimeter shooter as well, because he's a terrific free throw shooter making 82% of his shots from the stripe, and free throw percentage historically has been a good indicator of if a player can legitimately improve as a shooter overall, plus as a rookie he was pretty efficient regardless. He can score from all three levels, is comfortable creating his own shot off the dribble, and can explode around the basket for strong finishes over unsuspecting defenders, so all he really needs to do at this point is do it with more consistency, which I am confident in him being able to do so as he continues to get older with more experience, and as long as he stays healthy, because he's just 21 years old still right now, but already has a ton of big time scoring games on his resume. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these young NBA players and their futures in the league. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.